Psalms 33. And verse number 12. Psalms 33, verse number 12. Psalms 33 and verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for each one here this morning. We want to thank you again, Lord, for the great job that Brother Frank did at Sunday School, Lord, and uh, the things that he brought out, how that we need to take a stand, stand for you, Lord, and all the different things that he mentioned there, God. We pray, Father, you'll bless this message. And Lord, as we continue on in the same theme, God, help us to take a stand in these last days and be what you'd have us to be, Father. We just pray you'd save that lost soul, strengthen and encourage your people, God, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We read here Psalms 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. I want to say that I, I love my country, America. Amen. And uh, I, I, I thank God that I had the pleasure of, of uh, being born in America. And uh, I thank God that uh, Psalms 33 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And uh, <coughs> I thank God that uh, Proverbs 14, 34 says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Any nation. Righteousness exalteth a nation. That's any nation. It don't make any difference who it is. God uh, made, again, a wonderful promise to all of us that righteousness will exalt any nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Yeah. Any people. If we live for God as individuals, if we live for God as a nation, God said, I'll bless your nation. Folks, there's never been another nation on the face of the earth like America. Yeah. Never been. Uh, it, was a, it was a great nation, a wonderful nation, because of the same principle. They follow the Lord. Our nation has been a great nation. I love America for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I, you know, you've heard it before. You, people say, you know, you cut me, I'll bleed red, white, and blue. And uh, I love my country. Thank God for the privilege of calling this land my home. I love the fact that we can look back at our history and see where men and women uh, understood what it meant uh, not to be free. They, they weren't free, and then they ended up being free coming to America. I think about that little band of people that came in 1620, they had left England where they were persecuted for their faith and they had gone to Holland, Holland, and there they found two things they did not want. They found there that they were persecuted for their faith and they found also that their children were becoming <coughs> Dutch. And they didn't want that either. So they went back to England and petitioned uh, that they could leave and the king probably allowed them to leave, maybe just to get rid of the annoying Christians, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but uh, because there's 102 of them, they left there and came to this land, 102, for the purpose of loving and serving God and winning the souls of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been over there in Massachusetts, and uh, where the Mayflower landed in that area, I preached in a church over there in that area, I told you about it years ago, and uh, they have monuments and different things there and all that type of thing. Uh, they wanted to have freedom of religion and worship that was not dictated or controlled by the government. I love America because of the fact that I can worship my Savior the way that I believe the Bible tells us to worship our Savior. Amen. Yeah. I can raise my hand. I can stand. I can shout. I can sit. I can listen. Whatever I want to do. Uh, I can sit in the pew. Whatever. We can serve and obey God in America. How quickly that door is closing upon us, one issue at a time. Yeah. I love the fact that if I want to take a trip, I can. If I want to go on vacation, I can. In America. You say, what's the big deal about that? There's people in other countries that can't do that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. See, we don't. We got so many freedoms. We even know what we don't even know what freedoms we got. That's right. We can't even appreciate it. And uh, don't have to ask anybody about going on vacation or anything like that. Uh, I love the fact that Americans are still ready to die to defend America and defend other parts of our world as well. I love the fact that never have we been aggressive to try to take one inch of real estate from anybody else in the face of the earth. If we ever did try to take an inch of land, it's because of the, the war situation that we were in and to protect our own uh, country and so forth. We've had other places that want to join us, but never have we had a place that we tried to conquer for our own good, just to take another country. And uh, like Russia is doing now to Ukraine in the last five months. Our great nation was founded on great faith by Christian men and women. Did you know, you won't find this out, kids, in the school books, uh, probably. And uh, they, they try to erase our history. I'll get into that in just a minute. Did you know that 52 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Orthodox, deeply committed Christians? We just had July 4th about three weeks ago almost. And uh, Independence. You pick up that Declaration of Independence and you see on the line that old John Hancock, his name bigger than anybody else. He wanted to make sure the king knew who he was when he signed that thing. The three others believed in the Bible as divine truth. They believed in the God of the Scriptures. Patrick Henry, one of the greatest patriots of America, said, quote, It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Amen. Not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Allah didn't fit into that. Buddha didn't fit into that. Confucius didn't fit into that. None of these other religions. This country was founded upon not religion. It was founded upon Christianity. Amen. It was founded upon Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's what they won't tell you. Uh, the left-wing, God-hating, reprobate news media uh, won't tell you that. We're being told today that our nation was not founded on the Christian faith. I want to give you three things uh, this morning. First of all, the falsehoods about the birth and growth of our nation. There's a systematic and vicious attack on the history of our great nation. They are called history revisionists. History revisionists. They want to revise revisionists. They want to revise the history of our country. That's why these God-hating reprobates and our United States hating people that hate America, that's why in the past couple of years they tore down our statues. Remember that? A year or two ago, they were tearing down our statues and rejoicing in it and laughing about it. They ought to take every one of their hind ends and ship them away from this country and get them out of our country. Amen. Amen. If they don't like our country, honestly, if people don't like this country, why don't they leave? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't they leave this country? Why are thousands and thousands and millions of illegal immigrants trying to get into our country? And they're being let in. Why are, they, why are, why are people, for 50 years at least, from Cuba, coming across 90, uh, yacht, uh, 90, uh, 90 uh, miles of shark infested waters, you better believe it, on makeshift rafts trying to go from Cuba to down there to Key West, South Florida, Miami, and that area down there. Why are they trying to get down there to the shores to get to this country and risk their lives literally being eaten by sharks? Why do we have millions and millions of illegal immigrants coming from all different countries, coming into our country, uh, trying to get into our country, if our country's so bad, and it's so wicked, and it's so rotten. Right? Great, bro. What they do, his, they're, they're, they're history revisionists. What they do is take our history books and they rewrite them. They take out anything that pertains to God or American patriotism and they try to destroy it or hide it in the basement 
of our buildings in Washington, D.C., where our young people can't see it or anybody can see it. When the Japanese, you might not know this, when the Japanese conquered and went into Seoul, Korea, they didn't tear down their capital buildings, but they built the Japanese buildings in front of them so folks could not see, so they would not have the patriotism that the country of South Korea has today. We see that hiding of our history in America today. There is an attempt to rewrite our history, saying that George Washington was a drunk and a womanizer. You know what George, you know that George Washington was saved? He was baptized by a Baptist pastor by the name of John Gano, G-A-N-O, Gano or Gano, who was head chaplain of the Continental Armies. They've said that we are the aggressors in the wars that we have fought. And uh, have, have any of you been to Pearl Harbor lately? It just breaks your heart as you go and you uh, read outside of some of the buildings that uh, you'll see when you go. You read there, quote, here's what it says, Japan tried to take this place and this place and this place and this place. And then right next to it is another plaque that indicates and suggests that our country went into these places to try and conquer them for our own good. In other words, like America is a wicked country. Our country is in deep, deep trouble with those who want to wipe out America's godly foundations. Right. Godly foundations. Psalms 33, 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I want this nation's God to be the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. we got to take a stand. Brother Frank was teaching in Sunday school there. Brother Micah preached about it. And we preach and talk about it all the time. Got to take a stand. So how do we take a stand? Pray for your country. Pray for your leaders. Witness. Pray and witness. Pray and witness. Pray and witness. Be what God wants you to be. There's a wicked movement saying that our forefathers were deists and not Christians. Now, a deist, according to the American Dictionary, the English language of 1828, Noah Webster's 1828 Dictionary says, the deist is one who believes in the existence of a God but denies revealed religion. Merriam-Webster said, quote, they deny interference of the creator with the laws of the universe, unquote. Remember that Patrick Henry said, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what they have you to believe. That it was just founded upon you know, all these different religions. No, Christianity is what it was founded upon. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the falsehoods about the founding of our great nation. Secondly, the founding of our great nation. I want to mention some things about this. Historical documents clearly state that the founding of our nation was on the Lord Jesus Christ. Please remember, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Our country originally made God its Lord. But do you see we have millions and millions of unsaved, reprobate, left-wing God-hating, reprobate people trying to change the history of our nation, trying to uh, cut, uh, knock down all the statues, and trying to do away with our founding documents and everything else and rewrite them, and basically want to turn our country into a communistic, socialistic, fascist country, and we got to do everything we can within our power to stop that. Amen. 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 Letting them in by the thousands. Talked to a guy the other day. He said, he said, I, he said, I got all kinds of guns. He said, but I never really have carried a gun. So I just didn't want to carry a gun. He said, but brother, he said, I'm carrying one now. In the past year and a half, he said, in the past year and a half, he said, I've been carrying one now. He said, man, they're letting them in. And he said, they're not just staying down there in Arizona. He's the illegal immigrants. They're not staying in Arizona and Florida and California and New Mexico and Texas and all that down there. They're, they're, they're all around down, down through there. But they're, they're infiltrating up in here in the northern uh, states and in the northern cities. I mean, they're all over the place. And uh, 
One guy coming out of Huntington, West Virginia the other day, was on the news, uh, in, broad, in broad daylight in the afternoon. A guy, I don't know, he's in his 30s. He's coming out of uh, the Sheets, S-H-E-E-T-Z, Sheets Gas Station. He's probably seen him around the country. Uh, he's coming out of Sheets Gas Station at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And some illegal immigrant come behind him and started stabbing him. Stabbed him to death. He bled out right there on the sidewalk. Where they could get him. I don't want to do it. I don't want to carry a gun. You don't know who's going to come up behind you and try to cut your head off. Who's going to rob you? And it's not just illegal immigrants. It's people that's been in this country for years and years and years and everything else. I mean, you don't know what in the world's going to happen. Historical documents clearly state that the founding of our nation was on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, our, our country originally made God its Lord. Now, that's not to say that everybody that came to our country was saved. They weren't. There were 102 that sailed from England, 102 people. By the way, you say, what's that right there? That ain't no, no, my gun's not in there right now. Somewhere else. I got it around me here, but it's not in my culture. Uh, I don't want to frighten everybody. There were 102 that sailed from England. You don't know who's going to come through them doors during our church service. Haven't you read in the last few years, people, these guys going to the church services? He messed with the wrong church down there in Texas. Ex-FBI agent. I think it was the Church of Christ down there in Texas. Got a couple hundred people in there. The guy came in there and started shooting. I think he killed two or three people. This FBI agent got his gun out and went, boom! Amen. Killed the guy instantly. He didn't have to take two shots. It only took one shot. He's an ex-FBI -ex agent. Yep. Killed him dead in a doornail. And with the things that I say in the pulpit and on the radio stations, 10 radio stations, and we're on Facebook and YouTube, you better believe I carry a gun. If you were me, you'd probably carry three guns. <laughs> <laughs> there were 102 that sailed from England, Dr. Jack Hiles, back 40 years ago in the 70s and 80s. I was there for pastor school in 1980. I seen it. He has a bulletproof glass there in front of it around his pulpit there in front. He had one there on the balcony up there so somebody couldn't stand up there and get a clear shot at him. He had one there uh, bulletproof thing up there in the balcony right there. I was there. I was, I was in pastor school in 1980. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've had guys tell me about it, but I've seen it with my own eyes. You never know what kind of weirdo is going to be. There were 102 that sailed from England and a baby born during that 60-some day journey. Uh, during the 60-day journey there. Uh, 40 of them were what they uh, called separatists. That is what we call Christians. Uh, they were coming here. The rest of them came for different reasons, though they may not have been saved. Uh, they were good people, and they were looking for a better chance in America. Were there probably some bums in the crowd? Probably. I'm not saying they're ever, every, every one of them is a born again, Bible believing, good, walking, walk with God, Christian, or anything like that. I'm just saying, uh, were there probably some people that didn't, weren't saved? Yeah. But I would think that if you get 102 people together in a situation like that, there'd probably be some like that. But the humanists and the liberals today would tell us that, that it's not so, but it's a matter of public record. In the Mayflower Compact, written in 1620, 1620, 402 years ago. In the Mayflower Compact, written in 1620, in the belly of the little Mayflower ship in Cape Cod Bay, tells us why they came here. Now, those 40 Christians were the ones that made sure that this got in the Mayflower Compact. It says, quote, this isn't something I wrote. I wasn't living in 16, 1620. Quote, in the name of God, amen, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith, 
do solemnly and mutually in the presence of God, covenant and combining ourselves together, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, notice that he didn't say that we came here for freedom of religion. He said we came here to establish a Christian nation. That's why we're here. And uh, a Christian nation. So he says, uh, the advancement of the Christian faith do solemnly and mutually in the presence of God covenant and combining ourselves together. They want to, to further advance the Christian faith. All right? And so uh, not all these other religions. Let me tell you something. I hate religion. Religion damns people's souls to hell. Yeah. All these other religions. Confucianism, Buddhism, Mohammedism, all these, Catholicism, all these. You say, you shouldn't hate people. I don't hate people. See how, see how people get all messed up in their head? <coughs> we don't hate people. We hate religion. Religion damns souls to hell. Yeah. I hate the Muslim religion, but I love the Muslims. I'd like to see every one of them get saved. I hate the Buddhist religion. Catholic religion, but I'd like to see every Buddhist and Catholic get saved. I'm talking about truly born again, biblically saved, born again. Amen. 23 years later, those same men got together again and wrote what was called the New England Confederation. They said, quote, I didn't write this, quote, whereas we all came into these parts of America with one and the same end and aim, namely to advance the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and to enjoy, is that clear and plain? And to enjoy the liberties of the gospel in purity and peace. Let me say this, the government doesn't give us our rights, God gives us our Amen. rights. We have a book it teaches us that we're all created free to seek our Savior, to seek our own fortunes, if you please, or seek your own way, whatever you want to do. That's why God, at the judgment, will have no problem in casting people into hell who reject His Son, Jesus Christ. Because Christ did all He could do. He died on the cross, buried, rose again. And what does the Lord do? He convicts people. He deals with people. I mean, just the fact of looking out at nature, Romans 1 and 2, looking out at nature, seeing the trees and the bushes and the sky and the heavens and the, everything you see. I mean, no, you know there's a creator, there's a God. We went over that in our first, our first study in Romans. We went over a lot of things in Romans. We're still talking about the founding of our nation. Listen to this. In 1752, Leviticus 25.10 was put on the Liberty Bell. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Four times in the Declaration of Independence we are called to the fact that we are dependent on Almighty God. I want to tell you folks, we're surrounded by a bunch of liars, a bunch of people in this country who want to destroy the greatest nation that's ever been born on the face of this earth. Yep, right. Let's love our country. Let's stand for our country. Let's know and keep alive the truth of how and why we were founded. Let's take a stand for America. Let's stand up again and be proud that we're Americans. And if people don't like this country, they ought to just get out of our country. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, a lot of people do like it because they're kind of trying to get in through the border for years and years and years and years. Why are they trying to come to such a, a wicked, crazy nation and such a bad nation, according to some of these people? It isn't a bad nation. It's not what it used to be but it's still the greatest nation on the face of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And last of all, number three, the forming of our great nation. Historical documents prove that the forming of our nation was on belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we see it about the falsehoods, about the founding of our great nation. We see the foundation of our great nation. And then I want to see us, I want to look at the forming of our great nation. Noah Webster said, quote, in my view, the Christian religion is the most important and one of the first things in which all children under a free government ought to be instructed. No truth is more evident to my mind than that, that the Christian religion must be the basis of any, of any government intended to secure the rights and privileges of a free people, unquote. Think about this. 
as late as 1892, the Supreme Court said, quote, the happiness of a people and the good order and preservation of civil government essentially depend upon piety in religion and morality. You know, people say that uh, George Washington was a womanizer and a drunkard. Well, I want to read something from his prayer diary. Quote, O eternal and everlasting God, direct my thoughts, words, and work. Wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb and purge my heart by the Holy Spirit. Daily frame me more and more in the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that living in thy fear and dying in thy favor, I may in thy appointed time obtain the resurrection of the justified unto eternal life. Does that sound like a womanizing drunk? Bunch of stinking liars. I'm not saying he's perfect, but he's not what they, he wasn't what they say he is. Think about the forsaking of God by so many in our nation today. Hosea, led by the Spirit of God, said, For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. That's where we're at in America today. Sorry to say. <coughs> Abortions killed millions. Uh, homosexuality is now legalized in our country. Where a hairy-legged man can marry another hairy-legged man legally. That's putrefying. That gag a maggot. Like one guy said, that would gag a maggot on a gut wagon. <laughs> Humanism is many folks' religion. We've kicked Bible reading and prayer out of school. Years ago in public school, every morning, some of you remember this, you would stand, lay your hands upon your heart, you'd pledge allegiance to the flag of this wonderful country, somebody would read a, a verse or two of scripture, and then somebody would give a short prayer. I mean, you think about that. Uh, I want to say this in closing. In closing, uh, God's people concerning our great nation. God said, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. All right? Uh, how much time do we spend in prayer for our nation on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? I mean, we pray about our needs. We pray about a better job and more money and more, more, more presents we can get at the mall, go to the mall and you know, buy this, and we pray more about this or get this or buy that or this and that. But how much time do we spend in prayer for our nation? Uh, when was the last time that we got a broken heart and begged God, God, some way, in spite of the filth and vileness in this nation, send us revival? Not just so we'll be preserved, but so you will be praised and adored and glorified, God. Pray without ceasing. We pray about health. We pray about our food. We pray about this. We pray about that. We need to pray uh, about our country. Our eyes are dry. Our eyes are dry. The sin and the filth of our country uh, here in America. We need to pray. If my people which are called in my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked Amen. ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Our land needs a healing. Yeah, yeah. One thing we need to heal of is four and a half dollars a gallon for gas. And everything's outrageous in the stores. I talked to a preacher the other day. He said, there's going to be a food shortage in this country and around the world. You watch it, bro. He's been saying it for several years, a personal friend of mine. And I got up that same night on the news, they talked about a global food crisis. He said, oh, preacher, come on. Are you trying to scare us? Now you're trying, I ain't trying to scare nobody. I'm just telling you. They went over. They went over the things that we have to. The things that we have to import that we can't. We don't. We either can't or we don't make here in this country. A lot of we could, or make enough of to feed our own people. So we got to get it from Russia and Germany and China, big time China. We China has us in the palm of their hand. Yes, they do. We owe them trillions of dollars. That's why we couldn't do anything about this pandemic. We couldn't punish them in any way, shape, or form because we were eating out of their hand. They make everything. You pick up everything you pick up. Everything you pick up, everything you buy, it's made in China, Indonesia, somewhere. we got to pray for our country. 
You say, is that your message this morning? That's my message. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Right. If people only realize what God could do, if people only realize the strength and the power that God has, Folks, if we don't get right with, I mean, I'm telling, I showed you before, but God watches a nation. He has that country. The back of the Old Testament says the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and as far as God's concerned, drop of a bucket. He watches that nation. He did Israel all through the Old Testament. He watches a, a nation, and as they spit in his face more and more, he just puts a squeeze on them. It's gradual. You know why it's gradual? Because he's merciful. Right. I mean, he could do this. He could just go, boop. If he wanted. But he just squeezes harder and harder. How's he squeeze? Well, the squeezing has to do with tornadoes, avalanches, hurricanes, floods, too much water, flooding homes, businesses. Millions and billions of dollars of insurance claims, which causes your insurance to go up. Somebody's got to pay for it. You think State Farm and Allstate and all these other insurance companies, they're going to raise your rates because they got all, too much water. Then other parts of the country, not enough water. Drought. And other things. And then it hurts the crops, the strawberries, and all the different fruits and vegetables. Things. So when you go to these stores, Kroger's, and all these different stores, and you walk up and down the aisle, and you about have a heart attack. Oh, 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 oh. And you come out of there with two little bags, and they cost $90. But you got in two little bags. Or you have a big old cart full that was three or five, three or four hundred dollars. That's part of God squeezing a nation. I mean, he, he can chastise individuals too. He has no problem doing that. But I'm talking about, I want to talk about nations now. He works with nations too. He just, he just <coughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, he just went. He said, therefore, I took them away. That's what he said. Ezekiel 16, verse 48 to 50. He said it. He said, therefore, I took them away as I saw good. I took them away. We need to pray. The government was wicked in Paul's day. And the government, a lot of the people, not all, but a lot of the people in government today are wicked. But we need to pray for them. Pray for their salvation. Pray they'll make the right decisions. You say that all some of the people ain't going to make the right decisions. And we're supposed to pray for them. Let's close with this. 1 Timothy 2. We'll, we'll dismiss. Look at 1 Timothy 2. I want to remind you this. I, we quote it, me and uh, Brother Frank. I've heard Brother Frank go over the verses too. I quote him until I'm blue in the face. But let's just read them out of the Bible. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. 1 Timothy 2, 1. We'll close with this. 1 Timothy 2, 1. 1 Timothy 2, 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for the Republican Party, <laughs> for the Democrat Party, for the independents. Is that what it says? No. For all men. You see that? Be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority. That's president, vice president, senators, congressmen, governors, mayors, city council members in local areas, a school you know, people in schools that are in our in places of authority, positions of authority. All these people. You say, yeah, but I can't stand it. They're so wicked. No, oh, I can't stand to look at it. I can't even stand to hear them talk, preacher. How can I pray for them? You're supposed to pray for them. I mean, you and I were pretty vile and wicked before we got saved, too. Yeah. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness 
and honesty. For this is good. It's good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. See, that's why you're to pray for all men. See, the end of verse 1, be made for all men. Verse 4, who will have all men to be saved. He wants everybody to get saved. And to come into the knowledge of the truth. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, everybody, to be testified in due time, wherein to Paul said, I'm ordained a preacher and an apostle. So forth. You see that? I'm done. I want to say this. We need to pray for our nation. Pray that God will stay his hand of judgment and chastisement upon our nation. I don't know what he might allow next. They, they, they got this monkeypox thing. You say, well, it started mostly by homosexual men. I know it. They said it on the news it was. But I see where kids are getting it. Adults, other adults and stuff are getting it. Now it's got monkey pox. You see that? Turn over to Matthew 24. It's only 12 minutes. We'll close here. But look at Matthew 24. Look at Matthew 24. Remember what Jesus said? I know doctrine, these are tribulation verses, but we've got to get, we got to move closer to the tribulation uh, before the rapture takes place in the tribulation. But look what's going to happen right before all this. We might be starting this stuff right now. I don't know. Look here at Matthew 24. Matthew 24, uh, verse 2. Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be. Verse 3. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Matthew 24, verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Well, we've had that a lot, a lot the last 2,000 years. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. <clears throat> See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. We've had that a lot. And we're going to have it more as we approach the rapture and the uh, tribulation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Pestilences. You see that? That pestilence, all kinds of diseases, and all kinds of viruses, and all kinds of things. Uh, and all these, are, all these are the beginning of sorrows. You see that? And verse, verse 11, many false prophets shall rise, shall deceive many. Uh, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People are meaner and colder and more vicious today than they ever have been. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I know doctrinally it's a tribulation. It's talking about Jews enduring the end, tribulation, all that. But this is tribulation stuff. But look, here's what it is. Here we are in the church age. We're at the very end right here, and here's the rapture. We're sitting right here at the church age. See this? As soon as the rapture, we go up in the tribulation. So as the church age approaches the rapture, tribulation there, we're going to be caught out of here. But as we get closer to all this stuff, I don't know what kind of diseases there's going to be. I don't know what kind of pestilences and viruses and pandemics and things like that. They say the one 100 years ago in 1918, it lasted three or four years. Whatever that was back then, I can't remember the name of it. But uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't living in 100 years ago. But uh, I don't know what God might allow next. This thing we just had, I mean, now it's, they say it's coming back in some areas of Ohio and different parts of the country. People are getting this. I don't think it's as deadly as, as it was initially. But it lasted two, two and a half years. Weren't Americans, not only did they die, a lot of them, and in the hospital on ventilators and everything else. And the ones that didn't die, that maybe didn't get it that bad, Sure was a big inconvenience to your lifestyle, wasn't it? Yeah. I dreaded getting on an airplane, having to wear that thing in the terminal, I mean, inside the airport, wearing it on. The, the, I can't hardly breathe with that mask on. Not just the mask, 
going into restaurants, going into Walmart. Oh, remember the stuff we had to go through for two, two and a half years? That might just be the beginning, honey. Yeah. If the country keeps... <coughs> spitting in God's face... Don't worry, I'm not spitting nothing on thing. <laughs> Flowers will grow better now. <laughs> As we keep spitting in God's face, God might allow something even worse than what we just had for two and a half years. Man. I don't know. I know one thing. We went over this in Revelation. <coughs> Two or three times in Revelation when God's pouring out the vials of the wrath of God during the tribulation. You know what it says? They repented not. They repented not. It says at least twice, maybe three times in Revelation. They repented not. I mean, the locusts are out after them and everything. We went over it in Revelation. The diseases, pestilences, and everything else. They repented not. So as we get closer, church age, rapture. As we get closer to the rapture, there'll be less repentance. Yeah. Yeah. People will hear sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon, won't get saved, or Christians won't rededicate and get right with the Lord. They repented not. It's, they're numb. You can pinch them. They can't hardly feel it. Reminds me of Ephesians 4.19. You say, Ephesians 4.19, what's that say? Who being past feeling. I've preached messages on it. Who being past feeling. They're past, they can't feel it. Like a zombie robot. They repented not. Folks, pray, pray, pray. My people, which are called by name, the name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. That's all God wants us to do. It isn't like God wants us to do something that we're not able to do. Or something that's unreasonable. He's not asking something unreasonable. Let's stand if you would.